Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another developer Q&A video for Eve Echoes. Each week, the developers at NetEase take four questions that have been posed by the community, answer them, and then post that response to the Eve Echoes official Twitter account, at Eve Echoes. Now, I'm aware that not everyone's on Twitter or wants to be on Twitter, so each week I go through these four questions and their responses and I give my own personal thoughts and opinions on top of that. This is a way that I feel to help give the community an idea of what's coming, plus for me just to vocalise my sort of thoughts and concerns about the direction that the game may be taking in the future. Of course, these are just my opinions. I would love to hear yours in the comment section down below as well. Please like the video if you enjoy it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, and make sure to ding that notification bell, select all notifications so that you never miss an upload. That said then, let's jump right in to this week's developer Q&A, which is for the week of the 11th to the 17th of August. The first question then, with the rework of the new player experience, will you be adding this to uh, for new content moving forward, such as Relic data sites, or will you be relying on content creators, ahoy there, to explain these features? I think an in-game tutorial is much better than having to search outside of the game for how these features work. Yes, I actually do agree with that, but let's see what Kylan puts in response. We will later add content such as how to do scanning, how to explore relic sites and nihilist spaces to the tutorial. The ultimate goal is to make sure that the tutorial covers most systems and gameplays. Thank you for your suggestion. Now, as I said, I do genuinely agree with this. Now, as much as I, as a content creator, set up most of the content on this channel as how-tos, how as tutorials, basically to teach people how to get over the game, having an in-game tutorial does not replace me. It makes me supplemental rather than a necessary function, which I quite like. I do also believe that you can twin this quite nicely. I know quite a few games where you've got, like, in-game tutorials, and then you'll have, like, wider viewing. Basically, options in the menu where you could jump through to certain YouTubers and they'll be listed in there. Now, interestingly enough, I am genuinely listed in the game. If you go into the FAQ section of the support section, um, there is a list of content creators Creators and some of my videos are linked directly there, and I would love to see that made a touch more prominent. Not just for me, genuinely, I'm saying that I would like to see the game's tutorials improved and added to and expanded upon. I really like the new tutorials. I've just gone through them on a second character, and it was great fun undocking rifters and thrashers and doing all that kind of stuff again. I genuinely really enjoyed it. It's not perfect, there's a couple of bits in there that sort of upset me a little bit. Um, there's one point where it says, hey, repackage your breacher and why don't we put those missiles on the thrasher and I'm like no why would you do that I've got a slasher and a rifter there that I could like you know I, I could take the oh anyway anyway the point is I think it is great that they're looking to increase and add to and expand the in-game tutorial I don't think that necessarily replaces content creators and I think you can actually put content creators like myself like Geek of Forta, B8KD you can actually feature us in the game a bit more as well as supplemental material, which I personally think is the best way to do things. Why you focus on one thing when you can have both? The second question then. With the recent change to sovereignty by adding buildings, is there any intention to make them affect people outside of the corporation? Alliance mates, perhaps. Is this intentional to cause conflict to use the Entosis modules? Oh, 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 oh my goodness, is this question seriously insinuating that Entosis links were added to steal other corporation uh, citadels in your own alliance? Like, if you are flying through alliance space and you decide you want to do ratting, what, you should nearly blow up a citadel and steal it from your corp uh, from your alliance mates? No, we'll come to that in a second, but ooh, ooh, that's a hot question. We are considering a land leasing gameplay, says Melos. The sovereignty owner can ask for a certain amount of rent from other corporations so that the latter can access all features of the structure. We're still discussing this gameplay. Thank you for your suggestion. Please follow future updates for more details. Now, I'll be completely honest. I personally see this differently and of course I can't really argue with Melos it's kind of hard to you know to argue with one of the lead game designers about design intent um so I'm not saying he's wrong I'm just saying I've always looked at this from the other well I've looked at this in the other way that yes right now if you are for example in a in a system with a corporation citadel and it's got a bounty management center 
If you are part of that corporation, you will get the Bounty Management Center boot, uh, boost at the end of all of your ratting ticks. If you bring friends from your alliance, though, and they're not part of your corporation, they will not get that bonus. It only applies to people in the relevant corporation. Now, I don't think this is to cause conflict. Um, I really don't think this is to cause conflict. I think this is more designed to get every corporation to have their own unique citadel. To be completely frank, even in Void, we've had one citadel where pretty much everyone works out of, and it's just this one little pocket in space that everyone is there together. I think the idea of this is to spread out those alliances that little bit further, rather than congregating four or five, maybe even up to ten corporations all in one station, in one system, rather to give each of those corporations their own system with their own Station. So even like, you know, for us in Catskull, we've got Catskull, we've got the, uh, the our Alt Corp, we've got our Industry Corp, giving each of them a different system that they can have their own actual station in, and it has its own bonuses, I think is more the point. The idea is to fill out Nullsec, to actually have stations all over the place, rather than to conglomerate your entire alliance into one. So I think this is more a case of we as people in corporations and alliances, in the Nullsec alliances, we need to actually adapt to this gameplay and embrace it. And I think that that's kind of the point, that by having more stations, there's more for enemies to capture. It's, you know, all very well and good having one station in the pocket um, and then just being able to de uh, defend that one or two stations. But having multiple, you know, enticing people to build multiple citadels that they then have to defend actually gives a lot more interesting warfare, at least, at least in my opinion. Let's move on to the next page, question three. Any plans to improve Era Rift? I see at least 20 Era Mega Rift in Nullsec, but only a few in Low or High Sec. Please decrease difficulty or increase chance of spawning Small Rift in Nullsec. We set a limit to the number of each of Era Rifts in each system to two, says Nero, but as the system would spawn other Nihila space entrances randomly, you may likely see lots of space entrances in the same system simultaneously. Yes, I have screenshots of like 28, even 40 of these things being in one system, which is just insane. We will consider reducing the spawn rate of Nihilus spaces in the future. Thank you for your suggestion. Now, Nihilus space itself I don't think actually spawns too much. It's the Era Rifts, and the Era Rifts are going away once the anniversary event is over on the 25th of August. That's next week. That's literally this week. So if you want to do Era Rifts, do it now, because they're gone on the 25th. You will never have the opportunity to do those again to get those event tokens. Um, so yeah, they're, they're worth doing, at which point there's going to be fewer things in space to scan down. You'll be able to find those relic and data sites more often. You'll find actual Nihilus dead space. Um, Nero, if you are watching this, I don't think the question is here that there are too many Nihilus spaces. It's just the era rifts were a little bit overboard when it came to this event. And yeah, I get it. Um, the, you've got the small rifts and you get the mega rifts, and the mega rifts are all over Nullsec, and there are just a few sort of small rifts here and there. I also don't agree with the please decrease the difficulty. These are not difficult rifts. They're just not easily soloable. It's it's not a difficult thing. Like, literally, if you take a logistics vessel, a guardian, and a couple of DPS, you will quite comfortably... I've, I know people who are doing these in two or three man squads. See, it's, it's not that they're too difficult. It's just that there's a lot of them spawning. And if you're saying that that's too difficult and, you know, oh no, I have to bring friends, please, again, remember, this is an MMORPG. I agree that there are way too many Mega Rifts, but the difficulty of them doesn't need reducing. Don't make it so that everything in the game can be soloed, or what's the freaking point? Anyway, moving on. At present, the income of Angel Area is relatively low. Oh boy, this. Oh my goodness, this is a question I've been meaning to address in a video for quite a while. And only Angel Area, among all forces, has no output of engineering modification parts, which is unfair to Southern players. Have you made a decision to improve the income of Angel Area recently? Yeah, this was a big thing back in May. Like, it, I kind of glossed over it in the patch notes because I didn't want to talk about it too much then. But yeah, Angel Space has always been fairly low income compared to the others. Um, and then for some reason, during the May update, they decided to make it even worse by taking the few actual 
useful pieces of loot out of Angel and giving them to already more lucrative sites. I'll see if I can find the screenshots. Someone put up on Reddit recently a Gurustus NDS 6 compared to a Gurustus, uh, sorry, compared to an Angel NDS 10. And even the, uh, you can look at the bottom of the screenshot and you can see the estimated value is just far off. The NDS 6 for Gurustus is like twice as valuable as the Angel NDS 10. Now, what does Nero say? Nero says we've looked into why items sold on the market in the Angel area are relatively low priced and found that it's because the Angel area has more systems than other factions. Oh boy, more than two times that for the area that comes after it. Next time we make a balance update, we'll consider reassigning two Angel regions to other factions to balance the output. Th this... I, I'm, I see where the logic is coming from here. I see where that logic is coming from. I just think it's a logical fallacy. It doesn't matter about which of the five pirate factions has more total loot coming out of it. It's not like you've sat there and said, well, okay, there's twice as many angel spaces as there is um, Gurustus, therefore Gurustus needs to be worth twice as much. Why? Why? There's twice as much angel space, which means there's twice as many people wanting to be there, which means in EVE Online it's always been a hotly contested area, because there's so much of it that people want to each get their own slice of the pie. It's not like you need to sit there and say, well, it's unfair on the Gurustus pirates that the angel cartel loot is ultimately worth more because there's more of it being generated. What happens is that that loot is now so commonplace on the market that the value has absolutely crashed. And the May balance update then looked at those loot tables and said, well, we need to balance this for some reason and have decided to take away some of the lucrative stuff. Like, genuinely. I, um, I don't think it's a controversial opinion, I don't think that I'm alone in thinking that the rigs and blueprints etc that you get in an area's space should be relevant to that group. So why does Angel Space have drone rigs? I, I don't see why they have drone rigs. I get why we have missiles and cannons, that makes sense. Shield rigs, yes. But then we should also be having thruster rigs. Like auxiliary thrusters, polycarbon engine housings, all these kind of things should be in angel space. And I don't get why they took those away from us. Skirmish. Um, uh, skirmish command burst modules should be found in angel space. These kind of things. And I'm not saying, you know, if someone is going to DM and say, oh, well, actually, these things are found. The point is that is how they should be. Be. They should reflect on the uh, the actual group there. I mean, why? Why do you get drone rigs in Angel Space? The drone rigs should only drop in Serpentis, in uh, Blood Raider, and in Sansha. Those those make sense to have drones. Those genuinely make sense to have drones. Gurustus also makes sense to have drones, in fairness. Not so much for the Kaldari ships, but yeah, because Gurustus pirates heavily use drones. Angel Cartel don't use drones. Minmatar ships don't use drones, so why are we getting drone rigs there? Take the drone rigs away and give us some of the nice engineering rigs back. Give us some of those things like the thruster rigs. Give us maybe some of the you know, capacitor rigs. I get why we don't have capacitor rigs. That's fair enough. But give us the thruster rigs at least. Maybe the targeting rigs as well, because that's another thing that Minmatar are pretty good at. I don't know. Just to me, that logic of Oh, well, Angel Cartel loot consists of a bigger portion, therefore we've reduced the value of it. Doesn't really make sense, because if there's more systems, that means there's more space for other players to come along and actually get it if they want it. It just... I don't think I'm... I, I can't really explain why what I'm trying to think. I hope I'm getting the point across here that it should be about if you are a corporation in Angel Space, you should be able to make the same amount of isk as if you're a corporation in Sanchez Space, a corporation in Serpentis Space, a corporation in Blood Raider Space, or a corporation in Gurista Space. You should all be earning the same amount. The fact that you can fit more corporations into Angel Space shouldn't really play that much of a factor into it, I don't think. And I don't get why, basically, if you look at Serpentis space and compare it to Angel space, there is no contest. If you were an alliance right now, and you were looking at whether or not you settle in Serpentis space or Angel space, the answer is clear. You're going to go for Serpentis space, obviously excluding factors like who's already there. If, for example, it was a brand new server and you were just trying to decide where to go at the beginning, then Serpentis space is just far more lucrative. And... I don't get why they've gone for this against Angel Space. I don't know. I don't know. My personal thing, as I said, would just be to make all of the rigs actually fit the uh, the particular type of ships and that that fit there. Um, yeah. 
Blood Raiders should Blood Raiders and Sancha should have like your, uh, your your capacitor rigs, and Sancha probably needs speed rigs as well. Um, I think probably Serpentis needs speed rigs, Angel needs speed rigs. Targeting and scanning can be Serpentis and Gurus. There's drones. And, you, you 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 get where I'm coming from. Hopefully in this one. Anyway, those are our four questions. Um, as I said, in this one, yeah, I think the Angel does need some serious buffs to Angel loot. I don't understand what the logic behind that really is. Era Rifts are going to be going away in a couple of days anyway, so don't worry too much about it. New player experience, I think we should be able to have content creators alongside um, a new and improved tutorial system. I do think the tutorial system should be the main focus, and then you have content creators being sort of an aside thing where it's like, cool, now you've done the tutorial, this is what it all means with a supplemental. And finally, sovereignty. Um, sovereignty being tied to corporation is not to cause wars inside alliances, but to, uh, to, to entice you to actually build more citadels for each corporation and spread out through Nullsec as an actual empire should. Anyway, folks, those are my thoughts and opinions. Please do let me know yours in the comment section down below. Um, I'd love to have a chat with you guys as long as you're really uh, you know, happy to keep it all civil. Otherwise, hit subscribe, hit like, happy sailing, see you in New Eden.